Hi and welcome to another installment of Cavill's Comic Review. Uh, let's get straight into it today. I've got four comics and I want to just talk about. Uh, let's see here. Um, today we have Gotham City Sirens number 23. We also have uh, Uncanny X Force number 11. We have the new Amazing Spider-Man number 663, and actually something from IDW Comics, uh, The Rocketeer Adventures uh, number one. Uh, let's talk about Sirens first. Um, I like this cover only because of probably one thing. Look at the expression on Harley's face. Here, let me, uh, I have to say, I love this expression on her face. It's it's funny to me. And you know, it's like you've never seen her like go look like she's got that bat shit crazy look in her eyes. <laughs> and I like it. Uh pretty much if anything, um This is pretty good a pretty good read. I mean Selena's debating, you know, being Selena. She's debating whether help help Ivy to save Harley from the Joker, uh, and or not. Uh, at the same time, there's a full-blown riot going on in Arkham, which is practically normal nowadays. If you've been working at anything, in, if you've been working in Arkham Asylum, you pretty much know riots like a like an annual thing. Uh, there's also a showdown, which I like between Black Mask and and the Joker. Oh God, why did I blank out there a minute? And I like it. Plus, actually, Bruce Wayne Batman's in this one as well. Not Dick Grayson Batman. Since there's, like, so many Batmans now, it's hard to keep track. But I'm glad to know that they've got Bruce in this one and not Dick. Uh, but it's a pretty good read. Uh, the only other problem is there's a mini-comic inside. Uh, it's a little hard to say. Um, it was written a series by Jane James... Oh, J.J. Arams. And I think this has something to do with, yeah, this has something to do with the Super 8. It's a little mini comic inside. Probably would have been better off just making it its own comic instead of just sticking it in there. I mean, the book itself is already thick, and it's already got enough advertisements in there. I mean, look. <laughs> Green Lantern on the 17th. Yes, we know. Okay, so that's, it's a pretty good read. Let's move on. Uh, I'm going to move on to Uncanny X-Force uh, number 11. I haven't talked about Uncanny X-Force in a while. I've still been reading it, but I haven't talked about it in a while, probably because, I mean, it's Deb, it, in a way, it's Deadpool-related, because he's in the group, but, um, like I said, he hasn't, he, I haven't talked about it in a while, and the cover, well, the cover's pretty good, I mean, basically, how it is, basically, the guys have to go to the, how do I, the Dark Beast, yes, they've, if we remember the last issue, Warren's about to become the new Apocalypse, which is going to eventually mean Apocalypse's return. After they've done so many times to try to prevent his return. At the same time, they've had a breakout Dark Beast so they can take him back to his universe so they can find a cure to save Warren. And while doing so, the guy, the crew is dealing with seeing people that are dead in their universe, alive in this one, so it's kind of like, okay, you're dead, but you're alive here and, and everything in that. And eventually we'll see how things go. I mean, it's, I mean, it's part of the Dark Angel Saga, Chapter One. Um, I don't know the cover itself. It's I have to say it's a little off in in what point there. It's so, but we'll see what what happens. It, it looks like the new saga is because the last couple of issues have been off on sagas. Amazing Spider-Man number six hundred and sixty-three. Um. Actually, I like this one because it's got anti-venom in it, and I'm a huge fan of Eddie Brock and the Venom symbiote in the past. But I, I have to say, well, I've been reading the new Venom, and it's okay. I mean, it's good. It's a little hard for me to see where the, it's going on this, but ever since anti-venom came into the equation, I've lost track on Eddie altogether. Since he's, not, he's no longer bonded to the black suit symbiote anymore. He's become this new anti, like a like an anti, like a anti venom. It, well, like I said, he's an anti venom. But the thing is, is like he he's still doing the superhero thing, which is nice. And I, I've lost track, so I haven't seen where he is. I mean, where he's been over the over the last couple of times since becoming anti venom. But it seems like he's still keeping up. 
he still uses the symbiote like he would normally use the old symbiote, so he is kind of an expert on that, and that would be my phone. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, like I said, it's a pretty good read, and it's pretty nice to see Eddie and Peter getting back together to work, probably work together, even though technically the two of them have never gotten along, even before Brock became Eddie Venom. But we'll see how that goes. Sounds like the odd couple thing. Now, this is one, IDW Rocketeer's Adventures. Um, I'm going to admit something here. When I was a kid, I got so hooked on the Rocketeer movie when it came out when I was a kid. I don't know why. I mean, it was a Disney movie for one, and it was like, oh, wow, this looks awesome. Because as a kid, I was like, oh, this looks awesome. Then, then, how do I put this? Then the NES game came out. And that's where my hatred began. It bloomed like a rose and died like a rose. And surprisingly enough, the Rocketeer has always been up and down with me on this movie. Uh, oh, when I was a kid, gray, then slowly coming down. Video game just hit rock bottom. I hate the video game. I would really like to see some video game reviewers out there trash that game. I mean, I could probably could, but since I, I could probably do it, but since I don't do too many game reviews, um, who knows? Maybe if I got some free time and I can find it on the, my computer. What's that? Surprisingly enough, the book itself. I mean, I like I said, IDW does a lot of um, movie-based comics like Transformers or True Blood, like I've said before, and. You know, I've even talked about it, their infestation thing, if you want to check that out. Um, but, um, like I said, the story, it, it's not an actual main comic. It's like broken up into stories and like four, what was it, four part stories and, you know, it's, they're very short, actually. Surprisingly, they are very short. Mostly it involves more around with the Rocketeer and his girlfriend, Betty. Because those are two of the two the two main characters, and I would would say the most in this. Yes, please remember that Jennifer Gardner was Betty in the movie. So we'll just yeah, and <laughs> I haven't seen much of her lately. But like I said, um, a little hard to say. The book itself is read if you're a fan of the comic. If you're well, basically if you're a fan of the Rocketeer, you might enjoy it. I mean, the stories are up and it's kind of clicheic. I mean, Christ Almighty, Betty. Betty just screams Betty Page in this, if you want my eyes in. If you're a Betty Page fan, and you like that kind of uh, art style, you know, way Betty looks, she, she would be a perfect Betty Page knockoff. So, like I said, that's it for tonight. Um, Let's see here. I think, what, next week, uh, 17 Green Lantern's coming out. We'll see what the rest of the week goes. Uh, Fear Itself is coming out. Deadpool Fear Itself. And probably sooner or later, I think, what, Fear Itself on Candy X-Force is coming out. I like to see where that goes. I want to see what, what, what is the biggest fear? What scares Deadpool? What is his biggest fear? Uh, a, a world without chimichangas uh, or burritos or tacos? I don't know, uh, but we'll find out, and we'll see that. And I'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye.